Do we begin to reflect on the life and the times of uh, the Archbishop Emeritus uh, Desmond Tutu? Of course, wearing so many different hats, struggle veteran, Nobel Peace Prize laureate, chairperson of the Truth Commission, general secretary of the South African Council of Churches. That's just to name uh, a few. So where does uh, the current General Secretary Bishop Malusi Umpumwana uh, begin to describe. I'm sure what was a very, very close friend. First of all, Bishop, my condolences uh, to you as well. I know how difficult this must have been uh, to see uh, the, uh, the end of the life of your very good friend. That moment when you were told that he'd passed on at the age of 90, Bishop. Good morning. Where were you? How did you feel? Good morning. Good morning. I was at home. Um, it's a uh, look, the Archbishop has been unwell for some time, and uh, we had, uh, in a way, expected that this day would come. Uh, and we're grateful uh, for the length of his life. But when the moment actually comes, it's different. Uh, all the things that we thought, you know, what happens when he goes, when he does actually go, uh, it, it hits you. And I think that's been the case with all of us. Um, uh, you know, talking to his family. Uh, obviously, they expected it too, but they too were so shocked uh, that, you know, that last moment was devastating. And, and I think that they're going to take some time recovering uh, together. And that is going to be the case for, for the church. That's going to be the case for member churches of the Council of Churches that have really been pouring out their feelings about him, as well as the rest of society in South Africa and the world. Yeah, I, I think even if it is expected, nothing can ever prepare friends or family uh, for that phone call that you get, Bishop. Uh, no. What was your, no. your, your last interaction? When was the last time you saw uh, the Archbishop or spoke to him? Um, I visited in the last uh, week of, of November. <clears throat> um, and uh, that's really the last time I had I had a fair amount of quality time with him. Uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, you know he's always been uh, very profound in everything he says and thinks. And uh, we had a, you know a fairly good family time. Uh, and that was uh, clearly the last it was going to be. <clears throat> Have you spoken to uh, Leia? Have you spoken to the, the family? I'm sure it would have been one of the first voices they would have liked to have uh, heard from you. How are they doing? Are you willing to tell us? How, how, I'm no very difficult time, but how are they all doing? Do you know, Bishop? Well, they're holding up uh, well, the family. Um, they, but she, 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 you know, they've been married over 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this 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 is not um, a, you know a, a relationship um, that was uh, you know a part time you know and Malaya is is an activist in her own right. I mean, this is the woman who uh, before it was fa fashionable uh, stood up for you know domestic workers and established a domestic domestic workers association support organization, um, and, and, and 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 she is a, a powerhouse in her own right. And yet, um, uh, when this kind of thing happens and the partner goes away, such as the Archbishop has gone, uh, you know, she, 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 she's almost like, oh my goodness, what's life going to be like, uh, you know, going forward? But she has got supportive family and her children are around her. And, um, and of course, uh, uh, the, the institutions that she and her husband have established, including uh, uh, the, 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 the legacy uh, foundation that, that bears their, both their names, and these will probably keep her quite busy going forward. Uh, Bishop, I want to ask you in a moment, and this is an unfair question, so I'm not going to ask you to answer right now. I'm going to ask you in a moment uh, to describe the Archbishop uh, in one word, but there's so many words, I need to give you some time to think about that. You can't just answer that right away. While you think of that one word, uh, I'm going to ask you about the uh, the one moment, the one memory that's going to stand out for you, if you had to write this in a, a memoir or a book one day, and you had to just pick one, all you could pick is one uh, that you remember uh, from your times with the Archbishop, what would that be? There would have to be two. The first one is um, how he, uh, as general secretary of the South African Council of Churches, 
he it took the trouble to visit banned people. He would come to our home. My wife and I were banned in King Williamstown. He came there, uh, and he did this twice, to come and spend the night with us in a little foreign house and and play with us. And he would say this, this is the most outstanding thing. I just came here to inspire myself. And of course, you know, it's the other way around. <laughs> 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 and and I, I just thought that was such, such a fatherly thing to do. And, and he has done that uh, for many other people, he, not just us. And I know that just about everyone for whom he did this, it would have been the, the most important thing that happened to them as bad people in South Africa at the time. And the second one, the second one, if you'd allow it, um, would be the, 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 the practice. It's not a moment. It's a practice that he kept throughout until he retired. If when he had retired, he continued to do it. He would send notes to people on Christmas, you know, like, you know, with, a, with a, those days, the postal orders. A postal order with 150 rand, 100 rand. Please have this for Christmas. He did that gifting. His, this gifting culture of his is self-giving, but he also actually does it physically in many ways. Many people were in that flowers, everything that he just thought about people all the time. Uh, and Bishop, of course, will allow a second one. You, know, you can never just have one memory that stands out. Of course, it's an unfair question. I'm going to go back to my other unfair question as well, Bishop. Do you have one word? Can you use one word to describe uh, your late friend? <laughs> Maybe I'll use the one that you would use. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was speaking to Nicole Kente earlier. We were having a look at the morning papers, uh, uh, Bishop. I know, I'm not sure if you can actually see me. I don't think you can. Uh, but on the front pages of the Star, we have the Herald. Uh, I, people always say you can't hear uh, a photo, but I, I disagree completely. If you take a look at the front page of the Star, <laughs> newspaper, I can hear that laugh. <laughs> You and I can both hear that laugh. We know we can. Uh, I want to. I'm curious, Bishop. How I, there were there was such a, a a dichotomy of emotions with the late Archbishop. One moment he would be incredibly happy, that laugh, that smile, and he would turn on you like a scathing principal from a moral perspective if he felt that you'd gotten something wrong. How angry do you think the Archbishop was towards the end? about the issue around the Dalai Lama. Did he ever divulge anything? Maybe one quiet night he, you and him spoke. Did he ever forgive government? Was he still angry? It was, not, it was not just about the Dalai Lama. It was the principle, you know, Archbishop Tutu was an, an eternal internationalist. And, and, and even when he, he had to lead the truth and the, the TRC, he committed that commission to the prayerful community of the world. And it was just totally unthinkable that the South African government can refuse a visa to the Dalai Lama. It was just something that, you know, what kind of, what kind of government would this be that who, 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 who's, who's campaign for justice against apartheid had to be an international campaign. And today, the same government prevents the Dalai Lama and Nobel laureate who is struggling for his people to come to South Africa just to have time with Desmond. That, I think, he found un totally unthinkable. He, he was very angry about that, and he has remained angry about it uh, because nothing has changed. I was about to ask, do you think this would be the moment as we begin our final farewells to your old friend, uh, where the government would do this one differently, they would do this one properly in memory of Desmond Tutu. Will, do you think, allow the Dalai Lama here, if he chose, uh, to come over for the funeral? I'll, I can't imagine that they would say no. I don't think they would do that again. I don't think they would do that again. Uh, I mean, I know that governments always have to deal with the relationships with the other governments. There's always a big issue between South Africa and China. Uh, but, you know, the Archbishop uh, kept the same principle regardless of who is involved. Uh, and that's exactly why he will treat what happens in South Africa under apartheid the same way as he will treat it, uh, will treat the issue of Israel-Palestine and treat the same issue with regard to South Africa and, 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 and 
and the, the democratic government and mm. its own mm. behavior. It's exactly the same. He's a principled person, so everything goes by principle. He doesn't do anything he cannot explain. Bishop, it's always such a pleasure to have you on. My condolences once again on the loss of uh, your very long life friend, uh, Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu. That is Bishop Malusi Impulmwana, uh, General Secretary of the South African uh, Council of Churches, joining us here on the South African Morning.